Show, starring Loretta Young. Hello. In one of the letters that I received last week, the young lady recommended that I wear the white shirt maker dress with a black bow at the collar again. Well, as you can see, Jesse, I was delighted to accept your recommendation. Also, I think you ought to know that it isn't white, it's yellow. And the bow is dark green, and so is the belt. Our story tonight is an answer to a letter from a lady who says she wants to get even with someone for a grave injustice done to her. So right now, we're going to take you to the high mountains of the Pacific Slope. Their cool forests are a great relief from the stunted growth of our lowlands, but they are also a great threat, because the fire in our forest is never under control until it's out. Norma Calvin talking for Gainas. Say, Ranger Daly, how's the fire? Is everything under control? Over. All okay if the wind don't change. Over. It better not. Last I heard from Johnny, expect to be home by four. Today's our anniversary. Two years. Over. And he's well on his way by now. Congratulations, Mrs. Kelvin. Mimero, over and out. I see the ranger. I didn't expect to see anybody. Uh, no, I'm sorry, he isn't here. When will he be back? About four o'clock. I'll wait. Well, if you want to join the fire crew, just take that I trail and I want to see the ranger. I'll wait. All right. I'm sorry, I can't ask you in. It's against the house rules, you know. Yeah. I'll wait. your wood box, you might give me something to eat. Oh. <laughs> Say, you must be a mind reader. I sure need that wood right now. Come on in. Put it in the wood box over by the stove there. <clears throat> I'll have something ready for you in a minute. It's mighty good of you, Mrs. Kelvin. You know my name, huh? Yeah. Oh. I'll bring in some more wood. Calling Gainas. Mimbero, calling Gainas. Come in, please. Over. Mimbero, Gainas. Come in, Mrs. Calvin. Over. Gainas to Mimbrero. Over. Got some news for you from Tumacori, Mrs. Kelvin. The wind switched on him. Over. Oh, no. Did John get started home? Over. I guess not, and he's got a big crew from the road gang. But I thought you'd like to know. You said you expect him back by four. Over. Is the fire out of control again? Over. Well, it's blowing up pretty bad, but like I say, he's got a lot of men. So don't worry, Mrs. Kelvin. Over. 
Don't worry, the man says. My husband's been up there three days already, and the fire's flared up again. Of course I'm going to worry. Over. Yeah, well, <laughs> try not to, Mrs. Calvin. Over. All right. If you hear anything more, let me know, will you? Over. I'll do that, Mrs. Calvin. Embarro, over and out. Gainas, over and out. Sure, go ahead. You have a way of appearing out of nowhere. Well, I don't know what a way up here. Yeah. Good water, too. Sure. Sam does all he can for us. Very big hearted guy. I feel like your bacon and eggs well done. After the same old thousand on a plate, day in and day out, bacon and eggs is a banquet. How's not a plate? Beans. Oh. Never heard that expression before. What I mean is that for bacon and eggs, you ate another load of wood. Oh, sit down. Go on, sit down. You've done enough to earn your lunch. My husband's going to be very appreciative, too. You know, chopping the wood's usually his job. How soon do you expect him? Four o'clock, like I said. Past four now. Yeah, so it is. Well, he'll be here soon. Calling to Enos. Dumbledore calling to Enos. Come in, please. Over. Guy Enos to Tumacori. Come in, Tumacori. Over. Hello, Norma. Are you getting me okay? Over. Yes, John. You're coming in very clear. Are you all right, dear? Over. Of course I'm all right, honey. I'm sorry about the night. Over. Daly told me about it. But don't worry, we'll celebrate when you do get here. Honey, take care of yourself, will you? Have you gotten any sleep at all? Over. Well, a little here and a little there. I might make it, honey. They're sending in more convicts from the state farm. Bye now. Tumacore is signing over and out. Bye. Gainas, off and out. Tumacore, Tumacore, call What'd you do that for? I just don't want you to bother him, that's all. He's got a fire to fight. Looks bad, don't it? No. No, looks to me like they're getting the fire under control. Look, my husband is going to be late, but he is going to be here. Good. Like I said, I'll wait. Tonight, tomorrow, next day, I got lots of time. I I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to wait outside. You see, strangers aren't It'll allowed to. It'll be all right. Stuff. I was working for you, bringing in the wood. Please, will you wait outside? Don't I be scared. I'm not going to hurt you. Mind if I smoke with my coffee? No. Thanks. Uh, my husband and I like strong coffee. So do I. It's the best I've had since I ate at the Harvey house. How long ago was that? Over two years. Where you been all that time? Around. 
What you been doing? Working. Where? Here and there. What kind of work do you do? Construction job. Oh. What was it you wanted to see my husband about? I'd say it's personal. And then you know him? Yeah, I know him. What'd you say your name was? How long have you been married? Two years. It's our second wedding anniversary. It was just two years, 11 months, and three days ago that I met your husband. Well, must have been a very important occasion to have you remember it down to the day like that. It was. It's funny. I don't remember his mentioning it or you either. Maybe it was more important to me than to him. That's not very nice, Mrs. Calvin. I wasn't going to make any trouble for you. Already making trouble for me just being in here. I told you strangers aren't allowed in here when the ranger's away. Now go on, get out of here. Get out. And I told you I got business with your husband. I've been waiting almost three years to clean up. I'd like to do it without hurting you, if I can. Headquarters calling Guyanus. Headquarters calling Guyanus. Come in, Guyanus. Urgent headquarters calling. Over. Go ahead, answer it, as usual. Nothing about me being here. No signals, nothing. Just answer. Well, I... Guyanus to headquarters. Guyanus to headquarters. Come in, headquarters. Over. Hello, Mrs. Kelvin. The fire is shifting towards Guyanus Canyon. No great danger yet, but we'll keep you posted. In the meantime, one of the crew of convicts fighting the fire reports the prisoners missing. Five foot eleven inches tall, 160 pounds, dark hair, brown eyes. You ran away from the gang, maybe headed your way. Take normal precautions. Don't be alarmed, just take normal precautions. Acknowledge instructions. Over. Go ahead, acknowledge. Instructions acknowledged. Guyana is over. That is all. If you see anyone in your section, call us immediately. Headquarters over and out. Guyana is over and out. The escape comes. what you did? They call it assault with a deadly weapon. You shot somebody? I shot over his head. I was trying to win an argument. What about? He said I was grazing more cattle in Guyana's Canyon than my permit allowed. Were you? There may have been a few more. So what? Was your argument with the ranger? Yeah. My husband? Yeah. Now what? And now I'm going to keep a promise. I'm going to get even with his own gun, too. Yeah. I'm not going to get it. Don't do that again. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt any woman. married, are you? No. I didn't think so. Otherwise, you'd know the easiest way to hurt any woman is through her husband. Look, all I know is I'm a guy who's going to keep his word. Even when it comes to murder? Especially when it comes to murder. But if... You know... You don't make much sense. Why, 
Here, you've already spent three of your four years in prison. You only have one more year to go to be free. But instead, you broke out to kill a man. So they can take you back to mine, put you in the gas chamber. Now, honestly, tell me, do you think that's really going to be worth it? It's worth it. To me. And they have to catch you before they can gas you. Yeah, but they will catch you. You know that, don't you? <laughs> and then what good would it have done? You'd have gotten even. Gee, it seems to me like you're cutting off your nose to spite your face, huh? You're so pretty. And then you keep your mouth shut. Meet him in war. Oh. I'm gonna stay right here. Make sure he comes. But don't worry, I'll meet him. When I shoot him down without any warning at all, I suppose. He's already had his warning. He'll expect me to have a gun and to use it on him like I promised to them. Now sit down and be quiet. Go oh, on, sit down and be quiet. Way to show you that you can't blame a man for doing his job. Look, doesn't it make any sense to you at all? It's John's sworn duty to enforce the law on you or anybody else. No. Look, he's a forest ranger. That's his job. And I'm only a dumb cowpoke. Oh. So dumb it took me ten years to build up a little spread. A herd of my own. That's all I worked for. Come payday, the other boys would buy liquor, fancy boots, whoop it up in town on a Saturday night. But me, I'd save up and buy another calf. And always a good one, too. They thought I was loco to pay out $100 or more for just one calf. The right lines and the right bone. What's the use of telling you about it? You wouldn't understand what it means to a man to have his own herd, free and clear. See his own brand and the finest half that ever a man had and lost. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I understand exactly what it means to a man to own his own herd. To love his work, it's like his life's blood almost. You know what becomes a stock in a blizzard? They drift till they hit a fence. Then they stop. They freeze. And they die. That happened while I was being held for trial. 400 steers frozen and piled up against the government fence because I wasn't there to cut it warm. No man can do that to me and not pay for it. Look, I know. I know I remember that blizzard very well. It was the worst we had in 20 years. Thousands of cattle were lost on this range alone. And believe me, the government did everything it could, yeah. everything. Yeah. That's just how you talk, you and all the other political paupers. Government duty. That's because you don't know what it is to do something on your own. To work and sweat and build something. You live in other people's work. Taxes, Uncle Sam, Santa Claus. Oh, look, mister. My husband was out fighting in that blizzard for five solid days without any relief at all. Every man in the service worked like a demon trying to save your cattle. Yes, yours and every other rancher like you. No, it's true. They didn't save most of the herd because the blizzard struck so hard and so fast they didn't have a chance. And for your information, six of those rangers, political paupers as you call them, they weren't as lucky as my husband. They died trying to fight to save your cattle. Yes, yours, ranchers like you and my father. I'll say one thing for Kelvin. He sure buried himself a wife. He ain't going to die for sending me to jail. He's going to die for killing my cattle. Oh, look. Your herd was a great loss to you, I'll admit. It took ten years out of your life. But you're a young man. A young man. What about the men who lost thousands of head of cattle? 
Wiped out overnight after a whole lifetime of work. Men with big families. Old men who opened up this country, who brought in the first livestock. Who started ranching for men like you. What about them? Your man could be saved with talking, Mrs. Kelman. You could do it. Oh. That's a lot more than talk with me. My father was one of those men who was wiped out that winter. What outfit? Guy in his grandy. What was his name? Lefty Watson. Old man Watson gave me my first white faced cat. He did. He did. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it was a policy of his to give a start to any young rancher who's ambitious enough to start out on his own. What happened to him? He died in that blizzard, too. John found him and brought him in. To Macquarie, calling Guyanus. Over. Answer it. Come in, Guyanus. Hello, Guyanus. To Macquarie, calling. Urgent. Oh! Come in, to Macquarie. Guyanus returning. Over. Ted Bradley, Mrs. Kelvin. You're right cool for someone on a hot spot. I've got a message for you from your husband. Things have eased up here, but it's blowing up there fast. John is on his way there now in a jeep. He can't get through down the canyon, so he's going to swing around North Fork and then up to Guyanus. Is that clear to you? Over. Yes, it's clear. Over. Get everything, all official records, ready for evacuation. By no means leave before John gets there. North Fork is the only way out. Is that clear? Over. It's clear. Over. And don't be scared, Mrs. Calvin. You'll be all right. To Macquarie, over and out. Gainus, over and out. Yeah, you missed your chance to tell him, didn't you? Look, we only have one chance between us now, John and me and you, to get out of here alive. It's my luck, lady. You're in bad company. <laughs> Let's say you're in good luck. Because ours has been good so far. Now, come on, will you please help me get these files out on the front porch? Look, there's gasoline in the lean-to that we'll have to get to for the trip back. Oh, come on, mister, that fire's blowing up fast out there. Get away after we leave the danger zone. You could, you know, you could. Norma! Norma! Yes! Yes! Honey, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Are you sure? I'm fine. I... I... Matt Brown. You looking for me, Kelvin? Are you still looking for me? John. John, he came along just in time to help me. He, he's the one who brought all this stuff out for me. I don't know what I'd have done without him. And look, he's even carrying a pistol for me. You don't have to break down the firearms. Don't, just... Well, are you still looking for me? You sure got an awful talkative wife, Kelvin. I guess you can handle this now. All right, let's get these gasoline cans out of here. Yeah. There are many thoughts in this book that we can take comfort in. There's also a lot of practical knowledge, too. For instance, in taking revenge, a man is but even with his enemy. But in passing it over, he is superior. Well, good night. See you next week. Mm -hmm.